This is me. I have been an NIU fan my entire life and graduated from there in 2022 with a bachelor's in jazz performance. Today, I want to take control of my favorite team and see if I can rebuild the Huskies in NCAA 14 and win them a national championship. Our first season was not off to a great start against number 18 Iowa as they would demolish us 42 to 7. In week two, it was time for low lock cheese recruiting and we had started to fill up our board more now. We also had a winnable game that week and would do our best to take advantage of the opportunity against FIU and got our first win of the rebuild against them. We'd follow that up with a win over FCS Midwest, and at that point, we had quite a few recruits ready to start visiting, so we would schedule all our visits against Ball State, because we did not want them to see us get beat as bad as we did against Purdue. Thankfully, we would beat Kent State in our conference opener, and we were starting to gain more interest from some prominent recruits. We'd follow that up with a win against Akron, but would drop two against both Central and Eastern Michigan. Despite that, we still got our first big signee of our first year recruiting class, and would then pick up a win in visit week against Ball State. A lot more recruits would end up signing after watching us beat the Cardinals, and this recruiting class was finally starting to take shape. However, a loss against Toledo would put us at 6-5 and five headed into the final game of year one, but we would manage to walk it off against Western Michigan in dramatic fashion and snowy decal. What a way to finish season one. We would get invited to the heart of Dallas Bowl, and were looking pretty good against Nebraska, as we would end up pulling out a win over the Cornhuskers to cap off the year. Not many players were leaving us in the offseason, and we only had three recruits we were focusing on in offseason recruiting, which we would only end up signing two of them and would end up having the 53rd ranked class in the country year one of this rebuild. It was the start of season two in our NIU rebuild and so far we were keeping up with Wake Forest in our opener but that would quickly change throughout the rest of the game for us and we would drop our season two opener. Week two we added some big name prospects to our board and we had a chance to impress them against number 18 Arkansas. It looked like we were going to lose but Rocky Lombardi would put it within one with this touchdown to Lee Keller and then would go right back to him on the two point conversion to take the lead. Our defense would step up big time on four down and get the stop as we would manage to upset number 18 Arkansas. Unfortunately, we couldn't say the same about Iowa and now we're starting conference play. It looked like Western Michigan had us beat late in the fourth quarter, but somehow through SimCast we found a way to pull off the comeback. As the following week, we would get another slim one point victory and would also sign our first recruits of season number two. Unfortunately, we would lose to Central Michigan, but we were making steady progress on the big name recruits on our board, but losses like this weren't helping our case to land them at all. After losing more games than we would have liked to up until this point, we needed a win badly against Idaho, and the Huskies would deliver a 24 to nothing shutout. We'd follow that up with a win against Kent State, but yet again would lose to the Eagles. This game against Miami was a must win if we wanted to match last year's record, and the Red Hawks proved to be easy work for us as we would cruise to yet another victory as we were headed into our final game against Akron, which had some notable recruits in attendance. Once again, we made easy work of our opponents in front of our special guests Cindy Kell, and we would end our regular season with a victory. On top of that, we would sign a five-star athlete but wouldn't get into the MAC championship. So now it was time to go 2-0 in our bowl games as this was a close one throughout against New Mexico State. But our defense would step up big time in the fourth quarter when we needed them to and we would win the BBVA Compass Bowl in year two. Once again, we weren't losing too many players on the team and we were looking to add one more five-star recruit to our class, which we were able to do and that would give us the 66th ranked recruiting class as we were heading into year three of the rebuild. We had a tough test to start season number three, but our offense offense was apparently up for the challenge as Ryan Yost would throw the game winning touchdown pass and we would upset number four Ohio State and would immediately become ranked. Our home opener against Wyoming couldn't have gone any better as we would easily pick up the victory but the following week against Georgia Tech proved to be a little tougher for us as we would drop our first game of the year. We'd also somehow end up losing to UMass so we needed to bounce back. Thankfully we would do that against the Rockets as we were finally back on the winning side of things. Arkansas State was giving us more trouble than anticipated but Harris and Whaley would win this close one for us as we would find ourselves in yet another close one the following week on the road against Central Michigan but yet again would manage to pull off the victory. The Huskies were on a three game win streak and we wanted to extend it against Ball State which is exactly what we would do and then would find ourselves trying to beat Eastern Michigan for the very first time this rebuild and I'm glad to say we finally would. We'd pick up another win against Ohio and this game against Buffalo had some big name recruits in attendance. We would take care of the Bulls no problem in front of the home crowd and land quite a few commitments as a result. After a win against Bowling Green, we'd finally made the MAC championship. Our offense was off to a hot start, but Miami managed to catch back up, but still couldn't stop our offense as we would win our first MAC championship of the rebuild. We had made our third straight bowl game and made it three straight bowl game wins this year as well as we beat Texas State in the GoDaddy.com Bowl. Unfortunately, we were losing both of our coordinators this season and our first ever five-star recruit as well. It was okay though as we had a great recruiting class that ended up 
being our best one yet. We started season four outranked, and our offense looked to be off to a hot start against Wyoming to start the season, as the backups would make it into the game by the fourth, and we would start the season with a huge victory. Week two, we would add some new recruits to the board, and would once again have another easy matchup this time to open up at home in season four, as the backups would once again make it into the game by the fourth quarter, and we would blow out the Panthers at home. I thought Nebraska might give us more of a challenge, but this Big Ten team was absolutely no match for the Huskies today, as our offense would keep this game out of reach all day for the Cornhuskers, and we'd improve to 3-0. UMass for some reason had been giving us trouble all rebuild long, but not this week as we'd get the victory, and Toledo seemed to be a pretty evenly matched up opponent for us, but that didn't seem to phase our offense one bit at all. It wasn't exactly a blowout like our other games had been, but we still got a comfortable victory over the Rockets, and we were taking on yet another Big Ten team this season, and even though this was probably the worst we played in a game all season long, we still held on to get the much needed victory over Northwestern. The Huskies were 6-0 so far halfway through season 4 of the rebuild, and they were looking to make this their first perfect season. Both sides of the ball continued to show up each week and would dominate throughout the entire game, and as a result, we were ranked number 5 in the nation. That was until we traveled to take on Buffalo in week 11 of the season. Our defense could not seem to get a stop against them all day long, but thankfully our offense wasn't far behind, and the defense would get a stop when we needed it most on the last play of the game, and our undefeated season was still alive. Harrison Whaley had found himself into the Heisman list, and this matchup against Bowling Green saw our last few big recruits visiting. The Falcons were the top team in the East Division and giving us some troubles early on, but once again our offense was unstoppable, and our defense would step up and get the clutch stop right when we needed them to, and we would finish year four undefeated. The next week was a rematch for the MAC title, and it was looking to be another close one against the East Division champion Falcons. But yet again, the Huskies offense would find a way to stay on top the entire game, and we'd walk away with another MAC championship. Harrison Whaley would finish second in Heisman voting, and we found ourselves in the All-State Sugar Bowl. It was a tightly contested one against the Florida Gators all night long, but once again, our offense would put the dagger in them late in the game, and we would win our very first BCS Bowl game of the rebuild. We were losing our defensive coordinator in the offseason, and quite a few players to the NFL draft. We still had three more recruits left on our board, but we would manage to land them all on signing day to give us our best class yet of the rebuild. This could be our last year in the MAC. If we could win the MAC championship for the third season in a row this rebuild, the Big Ten would invite us into their conference next season, and we've played well against the Big Ten. We had a chance to be undefeated against them all time as a coach after this week, but it looked like Northwestern was threatening that streak here in DeKel. Troy Bauer, though, would find his way into the end zone for the game-winning touchdown, and we would have potentially our biggest game ever next, as number five UNC had traveled to DeKalb to take on the Huskies, and we were off to a great start. I'll be honest, I thought this game was going to be a lot tougher for us than it actually was, but I'll never complain about an easy win. Senior quarterback Dustin Fletcher was looking to lead a game-winning drive against Penn State, and after Troy Bauer would center the ball for us in field goal range, we would knock down the game-winning field goal as time expired, and we would still be undefeated against Big Ten opponents. It was time for MAC conference play, and this could be our last season of MAC action. While Western Michigan was a breeze, Toledo was putting up a tough fight against us. Once again, it was up to Dustin Fletcher to try to put together a game-winning drive for the Huskies, as he would find the end zone on his feet with less than 20 seconds to go in the game, and that would keep the Huskies' undefeated season alive. This was most likely NIU's last year in the MAC, and they wanted to finish their last season strong. Troy Bauer had started to break out in the second half of the season, but our main star was senior quarterback Dustin Fletcher. He had a chance to go down as the best quarterback in NIU history this season, as he had helped lead the Huskies to another undefeated season, and his dominance would continue in the MAC championship game, as they would demolish number 6 UMass. And not only would the senior quarterback help the Huskies win their third straight MAC championship, but he would be NIU's very first Heisman winner. Although we didn't make the national championship this year, we still had a big bowl game to win. And this year, it was the BCS Orange Bowl against Texas. All we needed was a first down to run out the clock and win the game, but Troy Bauer had other plans instead as he would take this halfback screen all the way to the house to close out the Orange Bowl, and we would get the victory over Texas. We would unfortunately be losing Dustin Fletcher this offseason, but would also be headed to the Big Ten for our final season. This was our final season of the rebuild, and it was going to be the toughest schedule we faced in the last six years, as this was the only way we'd be able to find ourselves in the national championship. Our young team looked good to start the season in a rainy matchup against Miami at home, and we'd start the season with a win over the number eight team in the country. It was the second quarter and we still hadn't found the end zone against Texas Tech, and this was a problem as they came into this game unranked, but we would squeak out a late game touchdown to take the lead back, and our defense would come up clutch on the last play with an interception to seal this close victory for us, as this game should not have been this close for us. Games like this were must wins, as we really shouldn't have been struggling against weaker teams like Ohio either. Thankfully, our defense was 
bailing us out once again, and Xavier Brewer would show off his agility in the pocket and score a touchdown that looked like prime Johnny Manziel, as once again, we'd squeak away barely with a win. If we were going to succeed in Big Ten Conference play, our offense was going to need to step up its play from the last few weeks. They clearly seemed to realize that and came out swinging against the Spartans as we would embarrass Michigan State on their home field. Even though this was NIU's first year in the Big Ten, they had started off well and continued that level of play against Northwestern. A quick non-conference break though, and we found ourselves in a tightly contested one against Pitt at home. I don't know why the unranked teams were giving us more trouble this year than the ranked teams were, but once again, we'd managed to pull off the win. We were 0-2 against Iowa this rebuild, and we wanted to finally get our first win against them this week, as we would dominate both sides of the ball all game long against the Hawkeyes at home. And with this momentum from that big win, we looked to carry it into our battle for Illinois. The Illini had just lost the week before, but despite that, they still looked good this week as they were keeping up with us all game long and would make it only a one-point game in the third quarter. We'd take a gamble, though, on a fourth and one in the fourth quarter, and Manuel Ford would take this slant route all the way to the house to extend our lead, which we would keep the rest of the game and defeat the Illini here in DeKalb. The Huskies were taking on Ohio State, and we were finally ranked in the top two. If we wanted to make the national championship, we had to win out this season, and we were off to a good start against Ohio State as our offense would drive down the field and strike first. Our defense did a good job in the first half as well of holding Ohio State's offense in check. They would, however, tie it up in the second half, but Xavier Brewer would connect with Brian Frazier to take the lead back, and one more fourth quarter touchdown from Manuel Ford, and we would seal this game against the Buckeyes. Michigan was going to be our toughest test yet, so we had to get on the board as early as possible. After they tied it up, they were looking to take the lead on their next possession, but we would force a huge takeaway and get another opportunity with the ball to take our lead back. Xavier Brewer would do so by showing off his running ability as he would find the end zone from 21 yards out on the read option, but Michigan wasn't quitting though as they would take their first lead of the day. But once again, Xavier Brewer would step up for us in the clutch, and these two quarterbacks today were dueling it out in the big house. Brewer, however, would get the last word as he would find Manuel Ford for a touchdown to take the lead with five seconds to go in the game, and this Hail Mary scared the out of me when it happened as Michigan would almost complete it but would get bobbled and we would secure the interception at the goal line and we would barely walk away with this victory in Ann Arbor. Nebraska looked to be a much easier matchup for us and what can I say we don't really need to see many highlights from this beatdown in DeKalb. If we won this game we would make the Big Ten championship. It was a close one though so we had to make sure our offense stayed ahead all day of Purdue's but we would still manage to give up the lead until the fourth quarter when Xavier Brewer would find Brett Fulton's streaking across the middle and would connect with him for a touchdown to take the lead back. One more touchdown from our number one receiver, Manuel Ford, and we would secure our spot in the conference championship as it would be a matchup against number five, Ohio State, and we had to win if we wanted to make the national championship. Ohio State was making it tougher than the last time we played them, but we were still managing to keep our lead throughout, and then the dagger would be thrown to Byron Williams from 14 yards out from Xavier Brewer as that would seal the game and NIU would win the Big Ten championship. Xavier Brewer found himself winning the Heisman at the end of the season, and his team found themselves in the national championship. The Huskies would strike first with a 16-yard dot from Brewer to Kevin Bradshaw, and Xavier was showing today why he was NIU's second Heisman winning quarterback. He didn't give up when he found his team down by two possessions with under five minutes to go in the fourth quarter, as he would lead his team down the field on their final possession, and Troy Bauer would finish off the drive from two yards out. And with a big sack from the Huskies defensive line on the final play of the game, they had finally done it. NIU had won the national championship championship.